Many Nebraskans live in rural homes that are not served by a public wastewater treatment system. Wastewater lagoons are commonly used in southeast Nebraska on lots with at least three acres where soils have very slow percolation rates. In addition, many small towns and villages use lagoons as their municipal wastewater treatment system. A properly designed, installed, and maintained system should treat wastewater to minimize the impact on groundwater, surface water, and human health for decades. This program covers proper maintenance of a residential lagoon on-site wastewater treatment system. Wastewater flows from the household wastewater plumbing through an underground pipe that leads to the lagoon. Usually, wastewater flows by gravity to the lagoon where treatment occurs and where water returns to the environment through evaporation. Proper lagoon maintenance is critical to keep the system functioning efficiently. This protects human health and the environment. In addition, it delays the need to repair or replace a system, thereby saving the owner money. Monthly maintenance includes checking and repairing the lagoon structure, managing vegetation in and around the lagoon, monitoring water color, and managing the water level. Check that the fence and gate are in good repair. Repair sags, damage, or holes that would allow children or animals to get into the lagoon area. Make sure the gate fits well and the lock works. The fence should have a sign identifying the structure as a wastewater lagoon. Check that the dike is in good condition. It must be the same height and shape as when built. Any erosion or damage to the dike must be filled, compacted, leveled, and reseeded to a perennial grass. Mulching helps control erosion until vegetation is established. Check for and prevent damage to the dike due to rodents and other burrowing animals. Inside the fence, maintain a vigorous stand of perennial grass to a height of 3 inches when mowed to no more than 6 inches. Tall vegetation restricts airflow, reducing evaporation from the lagoon. Do not let clippings fall into the water. Totally removing clippings is a good option. Maintain a vigorous stand of perennial grass outside the dike as well. This grass can be taller than the grass inside the dike, but should be mowed to stimulate a dense, healthy grass cover. To maintain adequate air movement, do not allow trees and woody plants taller than the dike to grow within 50 feet of the dike. Trees and shrubs close to the lagoon restrict airflow and block sunlight that is necessary for the lagoon to work properly. Eliminate plants along lagoon edges except for perennial grass. Dig or pull young unwanted plants that are just getting started. If this is not possible, use herbicides labeled for target plants that will not harm algae. Extension Circular EC130 Guide for Weed Management in Nebraska contains information on aquatic weed control. Apply herbicides directly to plants using a wick. Prevent rooted vegetation from growing in the lagoon. A minimum water depth of 2 feet helps prevent rooted plants from growing. Also, prevent floating plants from growing in the lagoon. If floating plants cover more than 50% of the surface of the lagoon, they may interfere with the treatment process and the lagoon may begin to smell. Floating plants may be physically removed by raking or may be controlled with herbicides. Select an herbicide for the specific plants to be controlled that does not harm the algae or the environment. Dead plant material resulting from herbicide control adds organic load to the lagoon, which may cause odor and increase sludge accumulation on the floor of the lagoon. Lagoon color is a good indication of the lagoon's health. The lagoon should be a bright green color because these green algae are an important part of the treatment process. Dull green, yellowish, tan, brown, or red colors show that conditions are not very good. The lagoon has different algae that do not provide good treatment. A brown color may indicate that soil is eroding into the lagoon. Gray or black colors indicate anaerobic conditions may exist, so the lagoon is not treating wastewater well. Odors are probably present. The lagoon should have a marked post at the center to check water depth. Record depth at the same time each month in order to monitor changes. Maintain a 2 to 5 foot depth of wastewater in the lagoon for best wastewater treatment. 1 foot of freeboard, or distance from the surface of the 5 foot depth of the lagoon to the top of the dike, is essential to contain a heavy rain event. If the dike leaks due to faulty construction, erosion due to rainfall or damage from vegetation or animals, have it repaired and the surface sealed if necessary. In summary, a properly designed, installed, and maintained residential lagoon system should treat wastewater to minimize the impact on groundwater, surface water, and human health. 
Proper monthly maintenance includes checking and repairing the lagoon structure, managing vegetation in and around the lagoon, monitoring water color, and managing the water level. If you have questions about your lagoon, visit water.unl.edu slash sewage. We have publications on lagoons, as well as a link to the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality's list of certified on-site wastewater treatment professionals. I'm Jan Hingstrom with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Extension.